My name is Tracy Bellion, and I am the owner and creator behind Tracy's Fancy, and I come here every single Friday morning at 9.45 uh, to meet with you guys and answer some of the burning questions that we get regular on a regular basis Which is why we call it FAQ frequently asked questions Friday. Did you know not everybody knows what FAQ stands for? <laughs> frequently asked questions uh, Anyway, usually we talk usually I'm sitting on a bench I've got a cup of coffee in my hand and we literally answer your questions for 10 minutes and that's it 10 minutes good morning Carol how are you uh, good morning JB and June and thank you so much for joining and say hello when you come on let us let me know where you're tuning in from also let me know if you have a burning question that you might not have asked Dixie Bell and we will address that on another Friday so today I bring you gator hide I know that last week we talked about um, on our Instagram TV by the way these are all stored on Instagram TV you can share these with your friends there's a little paper arrow a, a paper airplane looking button if you just hit that it'll allow you to share this with your friends um, you can also bookmark it or save it if you want if you want to refer back to it um, anyway last week we talked about top coats what's the best top coat to use we talked about every top coat clear top coat that Dixie Ball offers uh, Gator Hide is one of those. It's my favorite, but it is the the only product in the Dixie Bell lineup that has a little bit of a learning curve and it gets kind of a bad rap, even though it is an amazing product. It is water repellent, not water resistant, but water repellent, and it is super hardy for outdoor use. I use it because I paint a lot of furniture for children, a lot of nurseries, um, and children's rooms. This black Bombay chest I actually happen to be working on right now. I'm finishing it up today and I thought what better time to demonstrate how I apply gator hide. Now there are many ways to apply gator hide. I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell. Other brand ambassadors will apply it different ways. Some will spray it, some will use a blue sponge, um, some brush on. This is my way. All right, so I'm going to show you what I do. Uh, first of all, this piece has been painted in caviar. It is solid black. Yes, kitchen cabinets, Janet. It's great for kitchen cabinets as well. I've got it over my black kitchen cabinets. Gator hide is probably uh, most difficult to put over black, which is why I'm doing a demonstration today. We will not usually demonstrate, but this is, this is what we're going to do today. This piece is paint, painted in caviar by Dixie Bell. I've already used my finishing sponge. This is by Dixie Bell as well. Looks like a looks like a like a like a loofah, almost like a loofah. Um, these are available on Dixie Bell's site as well. I go over. I've already done this left to right. I don't sand it. I just run it very slightly over the chalk mineral painted surface that was sort of a chalky fill. And now it has a buttery smooth fill just by using this. And then I wiped it off with a microfiber cloth and I'm ready to go. Okay. So my surface is dry. I use the applicator sponges. I do not, I personally don't use the blue gator hide sponge. They have a sponge that's for gator hide, but it's round and it's blue. I like the square option. So this is what these look like. These are applicator pads. They come two in a package and this is what it looks like. It's like a microfiber, lint-free, dust-free covered sponge, okay? All right, so I use that. This is gator hide. This is what gator hide looks like, just like this, gator hide. Wonderful product. This is the 32 ounce, no, 16 ounce size. This is my fancy little setup. Every time I use these, I eat this coconut cool whip on my fruit. Uh, and so I use the lids. I use these lids, I save them and I use these. So I pour this into a lid just like this. So it doesn't require a whole lot. Pour it right into the lid. And then I'm gonna put this on my hand like this so I can demonstrate for y'all. This square sponge fits right in this lid. This is a dry sponge. It is not wet. It's a dry sponge. My paint is dry. My sponge is dry. You will need two sponges to do this because we're going to do a couple of coats or we're going to at least do two coats of Gator Hide. Three coats is even better, but uh, we're going to do two coats. We're only going to do one right here as a demonstration. I'm going to do one coat and be done. And then this needs to go get immediately washed with soap and water. And then it needs to not be reused until it's completely dry. 
So when I'm ready to do my second coat in a couple of hours, I will get the other sponge that's in the package that's brand new and completely dry, and I will use it to do my second coat just like I'm gonna do this coat in front of you. Then immediately wash and dry with soap and water, and then you can reuse these again later. You just don't wanna add any dampness to this at all. No dampness here. So do not use a wet brush, don't use a wet sponge. All right, because people complain that sometimes it dries cloudy and a lot of times you either have not let your paint cure well this was painted yesterday it's dried overnight so you haven't let your paint dry long enough and you've applied gator hide too soon or you've applied gator hide with something that had dampness in it or possibly you've applied gator hide and drug overworked it so i'm going to show you how to keep that from happening all right so I take my sponge and I lay it flat down in this, it goes all the way from one side to the other. I make sure I get a good coat on there, flat down in there. And then I'm gonna lift it up. I wanna make sure the whole sponge is covered and it is. So I'm gonna set my little tray aside and I'm gonna start right here in the middle of the piece, right in the middle of the piece. I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm just gonna move left to right, pick it up and come back to the middle and go middle to the right. So here I go, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna smooth it out, back to the middle, smooth it out. Now I'm gonna go one direction, from left all the way across, just like that. And that's all I'm gonna do. Now I do not go back into that area, re-dip my sponge, right back to the middle again, to the middle and out, to the middle and out. And now I'm gonna do one long left to right, just like this. I don't wanna go back into that area that I went the first time. I don't wanna re-go there. And Gator Hide sets up very quickly. So be, just because you think it's still wet, it's already setting up. Right now it's already setting up a little surface seal. Okay, so you don't wanna go back through that because you end up dragging through an area that's already trying to set up and you can end up with a cloudy area. So you just wanna only overlap your edge only overlap that edge and then all the way across, lift it and do it again, all the way across. If you see an area that looks like it didn't cover well, leave it, you'll get it on the second coat. I need to pour a little bit more in my tray. So this is how I do large flat surfaces. I'll do the drawer fronts, they don't have any ridges or, or edges on them, so I'll do the drawer fronts in this exact same way but I will have to use a brush to do the side panels because they have a recessed panel. This flat sponge really only works when you have large flat surfaces like a dresser top or a buffet top, just like this. So now my top surface is completely done. I am not rubbing hard, I'm just letting it settle on. I'm very, very light, very light over the top. Now I take my sponge and I go out around the outside edges where it has dripped off. I'm just gonna pick up my drips and that's it. I'm gonna let this set up and dry. It'll take, I'm gonna leave it a couple of hours and I'll come back to it. Now don't worry, as it starts to, to set up, it starts to change tones and it'll look like you've missed some big spaces and areas, but let it completely dry. Get a good light on it, get down to the side, look at it, sort of like when you put a clear stain, you know, like a clear varnish on. Kind of get down and you can see some areas that might not have been covered really well. So then, say right now, right now when I look down, I can see some areas that are already starting to dry. It looks like I've missed those areas, but I haven't. It's just drying faster than the other area. So. This dries a couple of hours. I come back with a fresh, dry applicator pad. These are called applicator pads, applicator pads. A fresh, dry applicator pad. Flat dip, center left, center right, all the way across. Flat dip, center left, center right, all the way across. And just step your way all the way across your surface from up close to you, away from you, away from you, back to you. It doesn't matter, but just don't go back into that area. Be patient, let it set up, come back in a couple of hours. Um, how much Gator Hide do you use on a piece this size? 
Very little. Very, very, very little. Um, I feel that, I mean, I couldn't even tell you. Probably, I mean, I won't even use an eighth, an eighth of that jar, probably. Very little. You don't need very much. Even though you're doing three coats, your coats are nice and thin. You want to have enough on your sponge, though, that you have enough to spread from the middle to the left and the middle to the right. You don't want to have to be like pushing hard and go, oh, I'm going to try to spread this out. No, you're delivering it. You're just laying it down and moving it out and let it do its little self-level thing. You don't want to be dragging it across. So when you say thin coats, I don't mean so thin that you didn't even get enough to deliver across from left to right. You got to have enough. It's great if you have a sprayer and you want to spray it. I've never sprayed Gator Hide. It makes perfect sense. I've just never done it. This works for me. So, um, let's see. How much Gator Hide? Okay, that was a good question to that. Can you please show us your finished product? Thanks for the demo and clear instructions. You are so welcome. Always, Gina. I always do. All my As long as you follow me on my page, Tracy's Fancy, go give me a follow on Tracy's Fancy. That's my Instagram page. Not one project ever goes through my shop that I don't share. I have furniture piece, bubble gum machines, painted chairs, knife blocks, whatever I'm working on, multiple every single week, they're always shared on my page. Um, what are the properties of Gator Hide and how does it differ from other products? Uh, I can't tell you what the properties are that are, like what's actually it's made of, but I will tell you that it is water repellent. That's what makes it different from the satin, flat, and um, gloss top coats, the clear top coats that uh, Dixie Belle makes. This is the, they're water resistant. This one is the most hardy and is water repellent, but people feel like it's a little bit more difficult to use, and so they usually tend to go with like the satin, Dixie Belle satin, but if you want to be in a wet area, <clears throat> like a kitchen or a bathroom, kitchen cabinets, bathroom cabinets, or for me, I use it when I'm doing children's furniture because it's really, really like a rock solid surface once you get two or three good coats on there, okay? All right, guys, we are out of time. We are actually, we always go over. We never stay in 10 minutes. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Ask questions if you want. I will address those later. Give me a follow on Tracy's Fancy and you will see this project completed. And thank y'all for uh, stepping in and we'll see y'all next Friday answering another burning question for Frequently Asked Questions Fridays. Thanks guys, bye.